We hit Blue Zone and we're going to talk to Simon Giuliani about sustainability in denim and why it's important and what you can do to help make denim more sustainable. So we all know that to make a pair of jeans, it requires a lot of water and a lot of chemicals, a lot of energy. If you look at the pair of jeans, 47% of the water that is used to make it goes into the cotton. To grow the cotton, it goes to the jean. Five to six percent is in the mill where you manufacture the denim fabric. And then you have another 47% which is in the wash. 99% of the jeans that are uh, in the market are washed. They can go from a rinse wash, a very simple wash, to a very heavy stone wash, bleach, heavy treatments and make it look very uh, worn down and used. A simple way to start to be more sustainable could be also to just work on that wash part. Denim historically has been workwear. After Second World War, it became casual wear, but it was still the same pair of jeans, rigid, 100% cotton. And in the 70s, for the first time, the designers like uh, Elio Fiorucci or uh, Gerbo, they said, hey, let's actually uh, try to use that in pret a porter Let's take, you know, really uh, evolved fits and make that in denim, which was quite tricky because it was a rigid fabric. But that was when the designer jean was born. In the 80s, uh, they said, hey, we got to loosen up a little bit those jeans because they're actually too tight and too rough and too uh, stiff. And so they threw them into a laundry uh, machine with some uh, stones or balls to just soften it up. They said, hey, you know what? Actually, like a, a broken in jean looks so much more rock and roll, so much cooler than a raw jean. And so they started to replicate through washes that look of a worn in denim. And that, with the time, became actually the go-to in jeans. We do some uh, training at our mill and uh, it's very fascinating to see how often it's still happening that you show the same garment raw and then the same garment washed and they can't believe it's the same garment. Because literally it's a transformation process that makes denim so unique. It's the only fabric where you want actually to transform it, either through wearing it or through accelerating this process, through washing it. That is why it requires also so much knowledge to work with denim, because it's something that you want to know how to transform. And when it comes to sustainability, the way of transforming it is key. If you want to, to avoid that 47% that goes into the wash, you can just start with buying a raw pair of jeans and start to just breaking them yourself. You will see a transformation process happening, actually an even more fun a customized transformation process because it's like depending exactly on your physique, on your shape, on your habits and, and of your movements. But if it's not for you, you could actually also go for an already washed jean that is washed in a better way. Today you can replicate a traditional wash using sustainable washing techniques. We know our fabrics better than anyone else. So when we develop a wash recipe, we know exactly how to get to that look with a huge and very important cut down on water and chemicals. Like, I mean, brands are, are more and more uh, getting aware of it, and now they're in the process of working on how to communicate that to their consumer. So this is why we have to kind of like put together all those things. Because if they understand it, then they can make that understandable also for their consumer. Thinking about my brother who's not into denim, like he could not tell you the difference between a sustainable wash or non-sustainable wash. It would be very hard for me as well, to be very honest, because like they're getting and we're getting so good at actually replicating a great wash in a sustainable way. So you look for something like made with laser, made with ozone. Exactly, those are two technologies, for example, that have uh, gone a long way. Considering that laser has been in the market for like 20 years, imagine it like a printer. 20 years ago, the resolution of those printers was quite bad, all right? and it evolved and today you have a brilliant resolution. Same thing happened with the laser at the beginning, the resolution of the laser was kind of um, rough. And now it's so smooth and so evolved and so, uh, so precise that it can definitely uh, replace a lot of manual treatment and uh, most of what we call the dry process. When it comes to wet processes, for example, ozone is a way to, uh, to fade down the gene without using chemicals, basically. Enzymes is another way, living enzymes. They kind of eat indigo. So you put the enzymes in the washing machine, they start eating indigo until you say, stop, this is enough, and you neutralize them. 
and you're, you're okay with that level of fading. If you are working in a store and if you are taking care of the denim part, you should get yourself a little bit more knowledge. So when they talk to the sales rep of a brand or they go into a line launch, ask questions. Don't take anything for granted because there's just so much knowledge that goes into denim. So if you want to be a professional, if you want to uh, give a good advice to your customer in the store, get some first-hand information and then pass it on. And I can guarantee you that your consumer is going to come back. Right, so uh, that was uh, Simon. Oh, Simon? I don't know. Simon. <laughs> uh, that was Simon uh, talking about sustainability and what you can do buy raw denim jeans and create your own fades instead of buying pre fades. If that's not you, go for something that consumes less water in the production.